I would like to introduce now Gianfranco Divana. Uh, Gianfranco uh, has been working in ultrasound for almost forever, in contrast ultrasound since uh, 2001 with the, with the launch of uh, micro bubbles on the, on the, on the market. And uh, he has been working as an ultrasound application specialist exactly to uh, support uh, people in uh, improving the results they get with uh, micro bubbles uh, in combination with their uh, equipment. As you mentioned, this is, uh, this is a very important aspect. And uh, Gianfranco will uh, try to uh, answer the question how to integrate contrast enhanced ultrasound in your clinical routine. And he will look at this uh, from a technical and a practical point of view. Thank you, Alexandros. Um, Gianfranco, the floor is yours. Thank you, Jerome. Um, I'll try to explain uh, what the images you saw from Alexandros, but from the bubbles point of view. So I've been into, uh, well, for over 20 years, I've been uh, setting up machines and um, watching uh, settings and everything. But I will, I will give you more explanation on what, what is the base of all the imaging that you have seen. So I will give you some series of practical trips, uh, tips to improve your uh, contrast ultrasound uh, examinations. So um, first of all, what are contrast ultrasound? What is contrast ultrasound? Contrast media is gas-filled micro bubbles with a phospholipid shell embracing it. Uh, ideally, they're physiologically safe, so non-toxic. The bubble size has to be very small, so we're talking less than 5 micron. In our case, uh, the average or the, mean, uh, the majority is 2.5. Stable enough to persist during the imaging examinations, uh, examination. And then to give a strong echogenicity, that means it's going to be, there's an interaction when you use the probe and then you will get that enhancement. Also, it's, uh, easy, uh, the easy, it's very easy to use, uh, room temperature, easy preparation. Uh, it has six hours stability, so you can use, uh, you can put it on the table and then use it within six hours. And it's very easy to, to follow the single kit. So I'm, I'm just going to show you what the bubble is. So we're going to do some um, physics, I'm sorry, some physics of, of micro bubbles. So the bubbles, some of your bubbles are, a phospholipid shell embracing an inert gas. The phospholipid shell is hydrophobic, but it's very flexible and that oscillates. And that is one of the secrets of contrast media. The second thing is the sulfur hexafluoride, which is a heavy um, a gas that is six times heavier, heavier than air, but it's very stable. So it gives stability in time. That's why the oscillation gives enhancement and then the gas gives stability in time. That's why, in, in, for example, in general imaging, we could see enhancement for up to six to eight minutes. So some characteristics, when you prepare the, uh, the product and you do the shaking, you will uh, be creating up to 500 million micro bubbles per milliliter. That's a lot of bubbles and you will need them all. The, as I said, the mean bubble diameter is 2.5. The amount of gas is very little. The osmolarity is very close to blood. And as I said before, the stability is six hours. That means you drop it, you put it on the table, and within six hours you shake it and you use it and it works. Uh, obviously, Alexandro just went through the indications of pacification of cardiac chambers, that uh, led ventricle endocardial border delineation, and then also the assessment of ball motion, motion patterns or uh, abnormalities. On the, on the image, on the left, obviously, there's no contrast. On the right, there's contrast. And then you can see the, that it's very easy to differentiate the, uh, the cavity from the muscle. So let's talk about uh, what is the, uh, the routine? What is the, uh, exactly what we are talking about, the, the, the whole procedure that we're going to go through? There's two major uh, parts. One is the baseline examination, so known contrast. And the other one is the contrast examination. So in the baseline examination, that means no uh, grayscale, you do the normal exa cardiac exam examination. Then you find, as is, it was mentioned before, two cardiac at least two cardiac segments that are not visible. Then you decide to inject contrast. 
So you prepare for that. So you can relate the vein on the patient, you prepare the product. Then you switch to the contrast examination. So it is recommended to do some practice, so practice some scanning approach. So depending on the patient, depending on the, on the, on the target that you're going to achieve, you, it would be nice to make sure that the probe is placed uh, on the right place and then everything else is, is good. Same as the patient breathing and everything, all the techniques that you're going to apply. Then uh, at that moment, you activate the contrast mode and then inject. Obviously, you record the trip, uh, the clips, and then eventually, if you need, you can repeat. Then let's talk about the preparation. So the uh, you follow the steps. Uh, it's very easy. When done, as I mentioned before, you just leave it on, leave the vial on the table, and then you use it. During scanning, then you decide that you're going to inject. Then pick up from pick up the vial again from the table, shake it extract and inject immediately remember that it lasts six hours so within that time you can use it the good thing about this is that when you shake remember that we create up to 500 million bubbles per milliliter and you need them all so make sure that you do that every time the process is obviously you will get it in the right ventricle then you will be and you will see it in the left ventricle and then you will get a homogeneous enhancement like in this gray scale here and that allows you to do uh, measurements uh, ejection fraction we analyze the movement uh, see everything else you will have this difference between what is the muscle and what is the cavity there's some example i hope you can see it you see it in the right ventricle then you go to the left ventricle and that is what that is the, the, the beginning of the contrast injection so um, this is the concentration in the in the cavity in the left ventricle and this is the moment of injection as you saw in the in the image you will get a high high enhancement on the cavity and that is important you will you you need that because you need to differentiate but also it will decay gradually in time okay so that's why it will in cardiology it will last uh, for two two three minutes depending depending on the concentration depending on other fat factors but anyway that is the optimal window you will get so um, what are the recommendations for the contrast injection as uh, alexandros mentioned slow contrast injection followed by slow saline flush i'm just giving you an example here it's not on, it's not practical in this case it's just an example one in one milliliter in six to eight seconds and then three to five milliliter or depending on what you use very slowly that's because you could easily get if you don't take care of that you could easily get shadowing and high concentration on the apex the remember that the passage of the ultrasound beam has to go through everything so if you have high concentration of bubbles then you will have difficulties having the homogeneous uh, cavity in order to fix that, you need to wait for 20 to 30 seconds. And then after that, you will start. But obviously you will lose that time. Obviously, and if you're doing stress echo, it's going to be uh, problematic. Then um, what about contrast settings? Most machines have optimized settings. Most of the machines today have optimized settings. But we have two parameters which are very interesting for us. And then you will, you will understand now why. Oh, your application specialist like me will guide you through this you have the mechanical index the focus and the gain i'll try to explain all of them mechanical index is a transmitted power so you have an ultrasound beam that is trespassing that that is going through tissue blood and everything and that is power so that will destroy the bubbles if you exceed certain parameters and the gain is receiving amplification. So that is like raising the volume on a, on a radio. So you are in, increasing the volume, that's it. So you're looking better. Obviously, uh, if you exceed too much, if it's too much gain, then you will have a lot of noise in the imaging as you saw from Alexandra's images. And then that could be the 2D or the PGC. PGC is the ones you can see on the, on the echo machine and that is called uh, that the, that means time gain compensation so that is amplifying the deeper you go the more you can amplify 
Um, some examples, as you saw today in the images, are um, uh, on both uh, left ventricular pacification or also on stress LVO. We normally use 0 0.3, you saw that today. Why is that? Because 0 0.3 is high enough to, be, to break bubbles in the muscle, in the myocardium, and then you will have the biggest difference between what is the cavity and what is the, what is the myocardium. So just to explain you a little more, uh, depending on, this is the, the EMI, you see 0 0.1, 0 to 0 0.4. And then when you use very, very, very low EMI, the bubbles respond in a linear way. That means if I send 20, I will receive the same 20. But when we go through the 0 0.1 to 0 0.3, which is the uh, low MI, what we call low MI, then the bubbles resonate. And then they send waves that the machine will identify as contrast or blood. And then identifying those, it will eliminate, eliminate the tissue. And that's why you get the biggest difference, okay? So if you, if you keep the range within those limits, then you will have the best enhancement. Um, obviously, um, bubbles oscillate, and this is an animation, but uh, in real time, you can see something similar. That means that the, the bubbles are sending a lot of waves that are being interpreted by, by the machine, as I said before. So they oscillate and reflect back. So machines are tuned for that, and they um, Alexandros explained some of the waves that are being used to interpret that. And that's why on the right, you can see that when you do, when you scan your patient, then you go to contrast mode and then you will see, you will not see a lot because the machine is waiting for the contrast. On the contrary, when you arrive, when the bubbles arrive, then you will see a big enhancement. Another factor is, um, there is, remember that I said that the waves are going through and they're hitting the bubbles and the bubbles are sending back also signals. If you don't hit the cavity in this case in a way that doesn't allow the bubbles to respond back, then you will have very low enhancement and then you will have some problems. Plus you have patient breathing. The breathing, the movement, uh, also in stress echo you have High, um, high heartbeats, everything is compromising. So you need to keep the probe aligned as much as you can. In the um, cases of breathing, uh, obviously you could have lack of enhancement and that the correction for that is repositioning the, the probe. Remember that we need to hit the bubbles to get the, the signal back. And then maybe ask the patient to hold the breath or observe the respiratory cycle so you know where the heart is moving and where, where, where the position of the probe is. Just briefly on stress echo, stress echo is uh, a pro the machine has a protocol to acquire ca cardiac planes and to store them. So you have all the, all the cardiac planes stored and then you can do contrast injections before and after each of the phases. In this case, you can see the yellow arrows are some of your injections. And then you can repeat, depending on each preference, you can repeat on each, case, on each phase or on some of the phases. But that allows you to have a very good assessment of the, um, uh, the cardiac examination. Uh, some examples, um, in this case, you can see, for example, this baseline goes to 1.6 MI, which is the normal MI of a normal uh, echo machine. But when we go to contrast mode, it, it goes to 0 0.3. It could be 0 0.1, it could be 0 0.2, 0 0.3, depending. The higher you go within the limit, the darker you will get the uh, myocardium. The lower you go, the less it will break bubbles, and then you might see some bubbles in the myocardium. But in, in, in any case, in this case, what we're doing is uh, measuring the ejection fraction. And you can see that already there's a difference between what was before and after the contrast. Contrast allows you to have a perfect um, difference between the cavity and the muscle. Same for um, ball motion abnormalities. Look at this wall 
that is very difficult to identify the limits and that is difficult to see how good or bad is moving instead when you do contrast you can see a very good difference same for thrombo uh, alexandra uh, Alexandra showed uh, some beautiful cases. So the same cases here, you can see on baseline, you don't have the, obviously machines today are much better in imaging, but anyway, and sometimes you have difficulties because the, 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 um, the ultrasound beam has to pass. Some it passes liquids, it passes air, it passes everything. So it gets attenu attenuated. Instead, when you do contrast mode, it is tuned to the bubbles reflecting and that's why you get the best enhancement so i've been quick i'm just giving you uh, uh this is my conclusion in case of mixing always shake before each use remember to do that and you will always get the highest concentration and the highest enhancement in the scanning uh, keep the probe in line with the cavity injection very slow injection very slow son of you and very slow saline flush Thank you. If you have any questions. Thank you, Don Franco. Thank you very much. Um, there was a question uh, before. Uh, uh, it's addressed to, uh, I think, to Alexandros. Um, the question is, I think you mentioned using contrast to assess bulbs. Yes, we, we can use not only to assess a bulb, but also to assess any doctor signal, for example, if I have a presentation, um, a signal to, to measure the atmospheric pressure. Uh, I'll say I'm not a big fan um, for a couple of reasons. Number one is uh, quite often get a lot of uh, artifacts, the vibration artifacts, and the signal is not clear enough uh, to, to understand actually what is the maximum velocity. Uh, and it's, uh, it's a, lot, a lot of fiddling to get the right, the right settings. You cannot say that much with the mechanical links and the, and the power. Uh, and the second um, reason, especially for aortic stenosis, is when you don't have a good um, Doppler signal in aortic stenosis because the, the angle between the ultrasound where the ultrasound pass and, and the blood flow uh, is um, it's big. So if you remember the, the Doppler is actually hard to, uh, to multiply the velocity by the, the course and the thick angle. If the angle is too broad, you're going to have a low uh, low signal, not because um, we don't have enough power or, or the, the receiving uh, ultrasound wave doesn't have enough power, but because uh, the intercepting angle is not, uh, it's not that, that we're going to give the, the velocity to, to calculate by the machine. So you manage to get some artifact there, but not necessarily it's going to change the angle uh, between the, the ultrasound beam and, and the red cells, the red cells velocity, the vector of the red cells velocity. So my, uh, my experience is not great with uh, using contrast for aortic stenosis in particular. You get, I get a lot of facts and uh, most of the times the, the result is inconclusive, mainly because it does not change the physics in terms of the Doppler equation. You can get a stronger signal, but you're not, get, you're not going to get a better alignment between the ultrasound beam and the, uh, and the vector of the red blood uh, velocity, the red blood cell velocity. So that's, that's a tricky bit. Thank you. Um, there are a lot of um, mentions in the literature about the need for uh, uh, contrast actually much higher in uh, stress echo and in uh, rest echo. What is your experience regarding this? The use of contrast in stress echo? Yeah. I would say that the majority of uh, the we did with contrast, we know that the sensitivity, the specificity, and the accuracy of stress echo is. Uh, uh is dependent um to the image quality so the better image you have the more the more accurate you are so i would say uh, probably 60 70 percent of our cases are done with with contrast echo uh both exercise and the uh, it gives, gives much much better results um of course you need to be cautious of the limitations so in some cases you may have some shading so you may not be able to see the wall uh, or you may see the shading is and you think you see the wall but once you're experienced enough, you can identify the limitations of contrast. I think the image quality uh, can be great and your sensitivity and specificity and accuracy is really dramatic. Thank you. Are there other questions from, uh, from the audience? 
please use the Q and A button to ask your questions. I, I would have a question to uh, Dr. Babson. Uh, you mentioned cardiotoxicity uh, in developing new anti-cancer drugs. Is it more and more taken into consideration, this aspect? In terms of the, the, the potential for more cardiotoxicity, you mean? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we don't know what we don't know, do we? When immunotherapy came along, obviously it's, it's revolutionized certain cancer types like renal cell carcinoma and malignant melanoma. But it comes at a cost of significant cardiotoxicity to it. So 70 to 80 percent of patients will get some sort of IO induced toxicity. Luckily, only about one to two percent of patients will get cardiotoxicity. That's to, when you think of the numbers of patients who are receiving these agents, that's still a significant number of patients. And 10 years ago, we wouldn't have known that. And I suspect in 10 years time, there'll be other groups of drugs or other classes of drugs that um, are keeping us uh, in a job. So it's, it, it's emerging that that's the reason why you say it, it, it is uh, more and more important to uh, perform echocardiography in uh, uh, cardio-oncology patients. Yeah, I think getting a baseline assessment is becoming more and more important, particularly with these newer toxicities that we're not, we don't know that much about. So if we don't have a baseline, it's very difficult to then interpret an echo or a biomarker three months into treatment. Whereas if you've got a baseline um, assessment of that patient, it's far easier to then work out what's going on once they've started the treatment. Thank you. Um, another question from the audience, should we consent patients for receiving contrast? What risks should I quote? I think Alexandros? As I demonstrated, the, definitely the contrast can induce arrhythmias. So arrhythmias is one of the things that we consider, but I think the most dramatic um, side effect uh, is allergic reaction. Or how they calculate actually cardiac arrest. Uh, for those who use contrast energy, you should be aware of this uh, allergic reaction. People typically present with some sort of chest pain. You can never see ST elevation uh, on the ECG, and it can crash very quickly. Uh, that's more dramatic. We have a milder uh, allergic reaction, um, like rash or some sort of business uh, headache or something like that, or metallic taste uh, in the mouth. Uh, many of the warnings have been removed uh, from the black box in the recent guidelines, so you can use it in what we considered before high risk tests, like uh, immediately after acute coronary syndrome or basically with a uh, very large infection. Uh, so this is quite safe now. Uh, definitely, we need to consent the patients. Whether it's going to be a verbal consent or informed consent depends on the local policy and the guidelines. But uh, every patient who receives a contrast agent should be consented about the, uh, the side effects. The, the most um, dramatic case is the allergic reaction. And you need to be sure there's no, um, uh, the no, there's no previous reaction to this uh, contrast agent. Some people confuse the, the contrast that we use in angiography or CT, but it's a different story. So you may have patients telling that you have an allergic contract, but uh, this iodine based contract is not uh, the, the microbiology we use. Um, but the, this is the, the most uh, dramatic. Not very common, but one in a thousand, I would say. Uh, but it's, uh, it can be little. Thank you. Uh, I have a question to, to Gianfranco. So, uh, assuming uh, we are willing to uh, to start using contrast, uh, uh, while you you mentioned that there are a lot of parameters uh, to um, uh, to look at, and uh, is there any possibility to get some help uh, regarding uh, regarding this? Is there any support that we can get to uh, perform uh, our first uh, experiment? Yes, of course. Um, I am supporting uh, many countries and I am, I've been around for long and uh, there's people like me that could help you. In my case, I have a long, the longest experience with, uh, with bubbles, obviously, and I have seen a lot of machines in, in my last 20 years, but obviously the contrast is more and more common today. Uh, most of the machines come with contrast mode already implemented in the machine. And then there's some, sometimes in some cases, there's some confusions on the settings uh, or maybe not clarity on how to optimize that. So what I'm doing, actually doing is following customers and then teaching them how to 
and then doing some demos together with uh, patients. So we do some practical um, sessions. And then the, the object of that is to uh, give them the principles, basic principles of bubbles, and then understanding how to optimize that. So we're doing that. Uh, if anybody is uh, interested in this uh, webinar, uh, you will have a survey at the end and then you can uh, leave your, uh, if you want to be contacted or if you're interested in a visit from any of us from the team. And that would be uh, very, uh, very fruitful for everything because what we do is we analyze uh, everything that is going on in your department and then we can see uh, the machines, depending on the machines, you adapt the settings and everything else. Thank you. I do not see any other question from uh, from the uh, audience, and we are perfectly uh, perfectly on time. If there is one quick question, we can we can take it. Uh, I would summarize uh, saying that uh, we have seen very nicely, uh, Dr. Dobson, the importance of echocardiography and the increasing importance of echocardiography in uh, cardio-oncology patients. We understood well uh, why and um, also, uh, as you mentioned, um, how it is important to have uh, an accurate and reproducible assessment in uh, doing echocardiography in any case. Um, Dr. Uh, Papa Christidis uh, showed us uh, a lot of cases where uh, contrast actually uh, improved and maybe saved uh, uh, the whole um, echocardiography examination. It was very nicely demonstrated by, uh, by the example, but by the cases. And uh, we also illustrated the fact that um, settings of the machine and the uh, that depends obviously on the physics of, uh, of uh, micro bubbles are uh, very important. That uh, this is a, a very important aspect to take to be to be taken into consideration. But that uh, yeah, we can uh, get support on this uh, on this aspect. And well, I would uh, close the meeting saying that uh, any question that would come afterwards question. is uh, welcome. You've seen a couple of other yeah, questions. Just one final question, quick final question. What pre-existing patient allergies would stop you from using some of you? Because okay. Alexander. Really? I would say it's only allergic reaction to some of you before or any of the ingredients. I know that some people are a bit cautious in terms of allergic reaction to sulfur or selfish. Sulfur is reasonable because it's it's part of the shell uh, or the microbes, but selfish, no. There is no evidence in the literature to prevent someone having some of the allergic to selfish. It's, uh, it's anecdotal, but there's no, no clear evidence in the literature. I say only previous reaction to some of you or any of the ingredients. And uh, a very last question Would the contrast need to be prescribed in order to uh, administer as part of the study? Well, if it's administered by the doctor, no. But now we set up services which are going to be physiologist led, sonographers, in which case this has to be prescribed by a doctor and the sonographer will be allowed to give it. Okay. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, um, all of you, for joining us for this uh, webinar. Thank you very much, Dr. Papa Christidis. Thank you very much, Dr. Duxon. Uh, thank you very much, Gianfranco. And uh, I wish you a good night. And uh, well, I hope to see you uh, very soon. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank Thank you. Bye -bye.